Hey Tadam, welcome to training vlog number five. Uh, thank you very much for listening. As normally, the blog will be divided in four parts uh, to help you be the best athlete you can possibly be. So the first part is going to be about the physical training. So we're going to go in depth in my training peak. Uh, the second part is going to be the mental training. Uh, this week we'll talk about procrastination. Uh, the third part uh, is going to be um, about the video of the week and we're going to talk about nutrition. And finally, we're going to look at the book of the week and the album I listened to the most uh, this week on the page. So um, we're going to go at the physical training. Um, so Monday I, lo I had the long and track ride. So as you may know, it can get very, very long inside. Um, so I asked myself, how can I challenge myself um, without kind of being outside of my physical uh, comfort zone? So um, I challenged myself on stability exercise, on a pedal stroke exercise, on breathing control exercise. So all, all things that were not uh, hypothetic me uh, very hard physically, but that were still a challenge. So the goal was to train my focus. So every time I would notice that my intention was lost in thought, um, I would brought it back to my body sensation and uh, to the current uh, objective. So uh, this week, a little bit like last week, I had three specific workouts. So uh, once again, the focus was on uh, the high power development. So the goal was to be able to recover, recover, recover very efficiently, efficiently uh, between interval. So like make sure to regain the breath control um, as soon as I can at the end of uh, the intensity. Uh, Wednesday, I went to my girlfriend apartment in Montreal. So uh, I started from uh, Prevost, uh, went up to Saint Sauveur, went down to um, Saint Colombin, then Mirabel, then Laval to uh, finish the ride in Montreal. Um, if you go down this. Uh, this way the, the uh, to Montreal, I strongly advise you to take uh, this uh, road. I mean, um, it's pretty, pretty good until you uh, reach Laval. Uh, other than that, the, the roads are amazing. And it's, if you're lucky, you're going to have tailwind, so it's going to go super fast. Um, Thursday, I did a long run, so about 30K um, run ar around uh, Mont Royal. So uh, no intensity really, just uh, really in control. Uh, I had a big concentration on being as smooth as I can uh, so I don't develop uh, injury or anything. Um, finally, I had the privilege to do a tandem outside with my girlfriend on Friday. Um, for me, it was just the perfect recovery ride. We, I mean, we chatted <laughs> all ride and uh, the landscape with the fresh low was honestly breathtaking. So um, yeah, this moment was the best moment of the week, according to me. Um, so here regarding uh, strength training, um, I performed two core sessions um, for stability and injury prevention and uh, two muscular explosion sessions. So um, very, very harder um, on the body to um, make sure uh, it helped me uh, to sprint better on the bike. So it gives me around uh, a week around 22 hours and 30 minutes, uh, 694 TSS. Um, I mean, a week, a week, I would say that is fairly representative of the average volume I do during a, a, the year, but um, I would say a little bit, a bit less intensity than um, normally when I'm closer to races. So we're gonna switch to the sun, um, second part, and the second part is the metal training. So today's concept is procrastination. So I will propose you some strategy that will al allow you to uh, do less of it. So um, yeah, let's begin. Procrastination. Make it a conscious choice to change the way you say things. Replace I must with I choose to. And substitute I don't have the time with it's not a priority. You will never get rich of the urge to procrastinate. The resistance that comes with doing meaningful work and demanding work never goes away. That being said, you must learn a new strategy that makes it easier for you to constantly show up and do the work. So here's five strategies that I propose you. So first strategy is being a, build a meaningful vision that pushes you towards doing the work. The second strategy is establish clear ritual and habit that will help you stay on track and support your most important work. The third strategy is just get started. It is unnecessary to imagine you need to finish the task. Know that trying is going to be valuable no matter the final outcome. Uh, fourth is remember the most 
not most of the pain is in the anticipation. Therefore, just take the next baby step in the direction of productivity and watch the discomfort dissolve. Um, and the final one is use the if-then principle. Identify what you need to do when you procrastinate. Set up a clear plan of action. So if you get them in, then you know how to react. So a little, a little warning here. It will only take a minute. It's only a lie. The interruption will likely take more time and certainly take your attention away from doing what matters. As a result, accept the temptation to do something else. Detach yourself from the desire to connect with the distraction and refocus your attention on the task at hand. Um, a little paradox here. You must be able to forgive yourself while holding yourself to very uh, extremely high standard. Reduce self-harshness to reduce the temptation to procrastinate while demanding nothing less than personal excellence. So my advice to you is to switch from perfection, uh, perfectionist to optimalist. So remember that perfection is the lowest standard that you possibly can set for yourself because it's pretty much unattainable. So I'm gonna let you on one quote from uh, Pablo Picasso. I quote, only put off until tomorrow what you are willing to die having left undone. So we're, now we're gonna go at um, the video of the week. So um, it's an interview of uh, Amelia Boone on the Ritual podcast. Um, Amelia Boone is a professional um, athlete. She's a, more precisely, she's a professional obstacle course, courses athlete. Um, she was the world champion in 2013, and um, she talks about uh, her eating uh, disorder in the podcast. So uh, let's go. Orlessness is what people have a hard time wrapping their heads around. Yeah, like yeah. how, why, why can't you just sit there and right. eat the meal? And your answer to that would be? I mean, I can. You, if you sit down in front of me and you put a, a plate of food in front of me, like I absolutely can. But mm -hmm. like the the what are the consequences of right. like eating that meal? Like what what you know? Walk me through like what the emotional experience would be for you if you were like f actually force fed something that you didn't want to eat right. and you're in that state. I mean, it's the it's anxiety that just goes through the roof. So I mean of not eating the food is the way to cope with the anxiety. It's the way to tamp down the anxiety. Mm -hmm. But if you actually, you know, went through the process, if I sat down to eat that entire meal, like heart palpitations the entire time, just like thinking, ruminating. And then afterwards you spend all your time ruminating about that food, about what you ate. And what's, what's also interesting is that I love food. People also think that, you know, people with eating disorders like don't like the taste of food or don't know. I mean, that may be true. It's true uh -huh. for some folks, but like you literally at some point in treatment, I remember being like, it was almost like they gave me permission to eat. And I was so happy at the time because I didn't have an option. So it was almost like you right. have to eat this. So right. yeah, I, I was really think... Like, it's an amazing podcast. Uh, I strongly suggest it. I suggest it. I mean, eating disorder is a subject that is quite taboo in the world of cycling, and it's really rare that we have some the chance to have someone to uh, speak openly about the issue. So um, yeah, I really think it needs to be discussed more and more honestly. Um, it is true that weight is a performance variable. Uh, we're not gonna hide from it. Um, I mean, if you want to perform, you have to. Um, to lose weight sometime but we have to remember that it's a really really thin line and that this obsession with weight can quickly turn into an element that disrupt the physical and uh, mental health of uh, an athlete so uh, thank you very much for uh, the great podcast so now we're gonna switch at the book of the week so uh, i have it here so the book of the week is the five annotation by uh, Frank Oesteski. So uh, Frank Oesteski is a Buddhist teacher and pretty much the leaning voice in contemplative uh, and of like care. Um, the book, how can I describe it? Um, it's a meditation on the meaning of life, I could say, um, how we can truly live, uh, we can't truly live if, if we are not like completely aware of our mentality, if that makes sense. Um, the book is also divided in five chapters. So the first chapter is Don't Wait. Uh, the second chapter is Welcome Everything, Push Away Nothing. The third chapter is Bring Your Whole Self to the Experience. The fourth chapter is Find a Place of Rest in the Middle of Things. And the fifth chapter is Cultivate uh, Don't Know Mind. 
So I'm just going to read you a quote that I think really illustrates uh, what the content of the book is about. So, um, quote, That is not waiting for us at the end of a long road. That is always with us. In the marrow of everything passing moment, she is the secret teacher hiding in a plain sight. She helps us to discover when, what matters most. So, um, yeah, it's a many, an amazing book. I mean, this book is probably the book that had the most influence on me, on uh, how I approach life. I mean, my copy is literally all marked up. I mean, all the pages are like that. So, um, yeah, if, if you think it will interest you, or even if you don't think it will interest you, I really, really uh, suggest this. So, The Five Invitation by Frank Oasis. So we're gonna go at the last part so uh, of the week, the album I listened the most um, when I was cycling this week. So uh, the album is um, Artie Drake Tree by uh, Ronda Jules. So Ronda Jules is an American rap group com composed of Killer Mike and LP. Um, they both rap on the album and LP um, is the one who do the production. Uh, production. I mean, if you s just you're searching for an album to motivate you during your training, RTJ3 is just the right album. Uh, Killer Mike and LP are exchanged th thoughtful lyrics with like extremely fire flow. Um, it's on experimental beat, but I, I promise you they, they really, really bang and they can motivate you a lot. Um, I mean, if you ask me my favorite rap album, um, it is really, really certain that uh, Run The Jewels 3 would be among, among the candidate to be one of my favorite rap albums of all time. So um, yeah, that's about it. So um, thank you very much for listening until the end. Um, I hope to see you next week. And uh, in the meantime, uh, have a good training. See you.